Hi, this is Jagdish Murani from Pivotal Product Marketing. I've got Pokit Chandra with me. He's the PCC Product Manager. Welcome, Pokit. Thanks, Jax, for having me. So Pokit is going to show us a, a very simple example of uh, Spring Data Geode and the new Spring Boot data for Apache Geode that save developers a tremendous amount of uh, effort and time by making their uh, applications uh, much easier to code uh, and relieving them of things that they would otherwise have to do in code. So the magic of Spring is, is uh, going to come through, hopefully, in this very simple example. Thanks for doing it for us, Pokit. So what are we looking at here, Pokit? Basically, you're looking at three windows. So the app is on the left top corner. It is a app which is based on simple caching ideology, especially, specifically Lucaside cache pattern. What we're going to do is, what this app does is that it has two basic endpoints. These are restful endpoints which can be hit over the internet. Now, one endpoint is just the home page. And when you hit that, it just responds back. It's a ping request. It responds back with a pong. The second thing is it has a second URL which actually hits a service. Now, a, it, and this is a spring service. Now, it's oh, totally up to the programmer to, to program that service in a way they want. In this scenario, all I have done is I am returning by appending a string which is hello world with a timestamp of the current system time. Now, every time you hit this service and it, it actually hits that logic, it's going to refresh the timestamp. So you're going to see new news timestamp every time. But if you cache that response in a caching uh, data store like PCC, it's going to only respond to you with the last time, whatever the first time the timestamp was established, it's going to return you the same timestamp every time you're going to hit that URL. So that's the, that's the whole look aside cache pattern is to, in order to actually have those, that thing cached, all you need is a couple of annotations with Spring Boot Data Gemfire, and it's going to establish all that logic for you. It's going to make sure that every time that service is responding, with a unique response, it's getting cached first and then responded back to the, uh, you know, to the to the caller. If the input is the same, it's going to respond from the cache rather than the service. So it's not going to hit the service. So you can imagine service to be an expensive operation like a database I/O or external third-party reading. Cool. What uh, what is that banning in the middle of the screen? Okay. So that banning is nothing but the name of the PCF environment that we have right now that I'm connected to. So I'm right now logged into CFCLI on a, on a particular PCF environment where we're going to actually CF push this app so that we can actually see this in action. All right. Um, first of all is this YAML file. Now this particular YAML file is, is the basis of any Cloud Foundry application. It specifies what do you want to push to Cloud Foundry? What is the artifact? And there are some optional parameters like service, that is, if this app actually requires a particular service, in this case, it needs PCC service so that it can do caching. And it specifies the name of that service. We have placed that at the home screen, and now we're going to try and look at the marketplace. So the marketplace is the place where PCC version is available. And we're going to look at apps, if there are any apps deployed in right now, which is none. And then we're going to look at current existing service. So in order for this particular demo, I have actually created a PCC service. Now, this may take, depending on what kind of IaaS that you have, or depending on different times, but it takes a few minutes. And it just spins up an actual cluster every time you say CF create service. Um, and it, it's specifying which, which plan it's using. Now I'm just going to type CF push. And it's going to use the, the YAML file that we described. And take that, take the jar file, and it's going to upload it. After uploading it, it's the Java build pack, which is the logic which recognizes what kind of program this is. It's going to scan it and look for its dependencies. So this is where the, all the good things that Cloud Foundry brings to the table starts to kick in. 
all the build pack logic and it's going to download the necessary configurations it need it's going to calculate the amount of memory a particular cell needs and it's going to do that now while it's doing that if you can see uh, the service that i've highlighted is this hello world service which has a at cacheable hello world annotation with it now it has a input that it's taking which is a string called hello world string now this becomes the key in the cache and the value becomes what is getting returned from this method so you can see me hello plus hello string plus nanoseconds and this is the configuration which enables the pcc caching behavior and that's all it takes these annotations are good enough to uh, make pcc as the caching provider now in spring caching providers are abstracted away from the user which is the right thing it is an implementation detail so in this case pcc is the caching provider and you can see this is the controller that i have the two endpoints that i was talking about one is the slash hello which actually returns the calls the service and if it is cached it's going to hit the cache instead of the actual service and you can see the request mapping which says just a backslash which is the home page which just returns a pong nothing else it doesn't hit any service or anything and you can see me uh, navigating this and showcasing or how this all works the cf push has happened and it has created this particular uh, route and this particular application we're going to now open this in the browser and try this out so this is basically the spring boot data geode annotations and uh, so spring boot data geode annotations are this idea that it's convention over configuration and the spring data geode annotations are only configurations so you have to custom build whatever you have so it from a spring boot point of view spring data geode is an implementation layer it's a it's a layer below it so a user should always be starting with spring boot data geode and that in internally would use spring data geode project and these annotations that i was highlighting previously are spring boot data geode annotations now they might be implemented in further layers but the important thing to notice is that there are conventions all over the place just with those two annotations we are specifying use pcc as a caching provider and everything else is just kind of like handled if you were to write this as a spring data geode application you would have seen much more configuration because conventions are not there still not going to be huge you don't have to program a bunch of things still annotations but it's much more explicit it's not implicit it doesn't assume so spring boot uh, project actually does this with spring which is the uh, you know the underpinnings of spring boot project similarly spring boot data geode is serves as the same logic and now we're going to see the home page is just returning a pong and uh, then we're going to look at hello world now there is a timestamp associated with it now we're going to press some refreshes and you will see that the timestamp is not really changing so that means the the input has actually cached this we're going to actually try and look at the look at this service this is actually bound to that app this is how this is all is happening so from a developer point of view all you had to do was just specify the particular service and that would be it so right now i'm just creating a service key service key is um, is a way for us to access the particular service instance of pcc or the cluster of pcc and it provides us the credentials and the urls things which are needed to access that so uh, the key already exists i think i've already created that before so now i'm going to actually display that key it's going to create some information and uh, that information is this gfish url which is the pcc cli so we're going to fire up pcc cli gfish we're going to connect to the to the pcc cluster to confirm the entries actually there in the cache so we're going to take this url it's going to go over https there are a few flags that i'm going to use just to make this quicker i'm not going to 
do SSL validation. That means I have to have a cert as well. So I'm just going to skip the SSL for now and just provide my user. These can be ignored because I've skipped the SSL validation, so I have no need to provide SSL properties. So this is right now hooked up to my LDAP server. So I'm actually entering my corporate ID. And now I'm logged in. So I can see the members. And I can see the region is created. Now regions is a concept in Pivotal Cloud Cache, which is a logical uh, segregation of where the data lives. It's a, it's a hash map. It's a key value store. And it's, it basically collects a similar looking elements into a particular region. And that's the region concept. And then there are different replication strategies with the regions, which, which, you, we, which we, we have already explained in our previous blogs. But that's how this, this is basically selected. I didn't create this region. This was automatically created for me by Spring Boot Data Gemfire. And the name of the region is the at cacheable in the annotation. And when I say describe this region, I'm going to get at least one entry there. There you go. Because the key didn't change between my refreshes. So the entry was only done once. And every time it was surfacing the cached request. You showed us some uh, annotations that save a lot of time. But in Spring Boot data for Apache Geo, there's some auto configuration stuff that even doesn't require annotations. Because if you put things in the right class path, it just automatically does it for you. If you see, there is a demo application class which is in the, in the PCC Hello World example. The demo application class uh, is the one which is auto-wiring everything. So it actually picks up PCCs on the class path and starts to look for a couple of annotations to hook it up as a caching provider. Those annotations really are te uh, telling Spring Boot Data Geo project that what mechanism they should use in order to inject the, the configurations to the PCC cluster. It's, uh, and rest of the stuff, like there is, there is a bunch of things. There is an authentication going on in the background, authorization going on in the background, and none of it is specified right now. There are users which are getting returned with the binding of a particular service. You have to read that username, password. You have to send it back to the cluster. All those good things, which is a security posture, which is necessary, are all handled by Spring. You are not even aware that something like this, these things are happening. You can go look in the log files. It's getting logged there. But it's all a secured cluster. Without having write, written a single line about security and how to do this, I'm actually connecting to a secured cluster. Now, that's amazing. That's the auto-configuration magic that Spring Boot Data Geo brings to the table. Conventions is, uh, are important. Conventions are extremely important. And the convention that we have with Pivotal Cloud Foundry is that everything is secure by default. So PCC is following the same convention, and Spring Boot Data Geode is following the same path that it's going to assume that it's going to go through the logic that if there is a username password, I'm going to use it. If there, are, there is none, I'm not going to provide it. So there is a code path for that as well. So it just goes through step one, two, three, four, and keeps on trying until it becomes uh, successful. Thanks a lot, Polkit. This was a great illustration of how we made caching easier with Spring.